Remember last week when I showed you the Roman Smart watercolors, I said I was going to make a palette. Well, that's what I'm going to be doing today. And so we are, so this is going to be like a casual vlog where I just make this palette thing and chat at the same time. Now I had the plan. I'll show you the palettes first. The Roman Smoltz watercolors came in these plastic trays and there's two of them. And originally I had this grand idea of making a full palette, like a proper custom made palette out of foam boards. And I made a test piece and it works. However, it is a heck of a lot more work than I thought it was gonna be. And I really don't wanna be doing that much into it. So what I have decided to do instead is to label the palette with the color names because that's one information I definitely need in a palette. If you notice, all my palettes are labeled with the color names. Just it's because I have so many colors, there's no way I would ever remember what color is where. So I am labeling this currently. And then my plan is to make some sort of frame for these trays because these trays are just trays at the moment. I can't stack them and I want to be able to stack them. So yeah, I'm gonna come up with something. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what yet. Probably a baseboard with a frame so that I can stack these two to store them. Today is 31st of January, so yesterday was when my answering my your assumptions about me. Goodness, I can't speak properly today. And I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone who commented because I've always felt really, really alone about how I felt, especially about gender and fitting into the societal feminine expectations and stuff. And it took me years to come to terms with it myself I didn't really come to terms with it until I picked up the courage to speak to my husband about how I was feeling and he really encouraged me to explore oh no I got loads of paper on myself to explore that and express that and without that support I don't think I would have acknowledged it within myself that I felt like I didn't belong to those stereotypes so it's uh, and since then I still felt quite alone in this I thought well you know there's these people who are cisgender and feel like they're gender and that's great and there are people who don't feel like they're gender and then there are people who identify as gender neutral and this all cool but then where do I belong in that spectrum of genders? Because I feel that I am a woman, but not necessarily go with the, like there, there isn't a thing <laughs> that we can say, oh, we're this thing where we feel like women, but we don't like what society is telling us to be like. So it felt really amazing to hear from so many of you who were like, I feel exactly the same, or I know someone who is exactly the same and is totally fine. It felt like really, yeah, I stopped feeling lonely so much in how I feel about this topic. And I never expected to feel that way through making that video. So I'm incredibly grateful for everyone who commented and everyone was so nice and kind and so accepting of how I feel. I think it's awesome that we live in an age where we can just feel how we feel and have loads of people support us. Not necessarily everyone, but just the fact that people will be like, yeah, that's fine, is amazing to me. So yeah, thank you. So I'm putting all the colours back into the first tray because I finished labelling that one. And then I am going to be labelling the other tray. Just see 
what it's like. So, where's the tiny cupboard? <laughs> what are you doing in there? Making no noise. I'm making no movement so that you can feel without going. I find that I'm always having to make amends for shortcomings Trying to make my way knocking on every door in this maze So that's the two trays labelled and the pans gone back in. I'm really happy with the how it looks looks pretty neat now i've got to make frames to put these in i think i'm going to put this on the bottom layer and then this on the top layer and so i'm going to make the base for this first and i'm hoping i can kind of make a lid that overlaps this on the underside of this and then yeah i'm really not sure what i'm doing at the moment i am just making up as i go along because my original plan has gone out the window but yes we'll see how this goes i have already marked up squares on the foam board i just traced around the edges of one of the trays while it was empty and i've kind of given myself a few spares here so that if I make a mistake, I don't have to empty an entire tray again just to mark them out. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. You know these paper cutters, the box openers, cutters thing? Well, I'm always afraid of snapping the blade for myself when I need a fresh blade. And so I always get my husband to do it for me because they're really scary for me to do. And I had to give myself a new fresh part of the blade and I was like I'm gonna be really good I'm gonna be independent and do this myself and this is what happened there's a perforation that goes diagonally where it should have broken but no it just broke straight and I have no idea why because on the back there's you know this support to make sure it breaks diagonally and it just broke straight and I don't get it. <laughs> but now I know why I don't do this for myself. I am utterly useless at it. that is the first layer done and basically i just taped the sides with packing tape because it was the best option i had on me and i've made it a little bit taller than the pans themselves because these pans have a tendency to stick to things as i found out so i'm just giving it extra height to make sure that the paint doesn't stick to the top layer of this tray now i've got to figure out how to make the second layer i think hmm, i want it to be stable so i think i'm gonna put a frame around the bottom of it that will snugly fit this frame so it'd be like a double decker thing i don't know i guess i just have to make it and see what happens No end to what can be won one day. You got to So I've made that's the bottom layer, and then this goes on top like this, and then where's the other tray? This one is hopefully gonna sit like this. Brilliant. So now all I want to make is a lid to go over this. What I'm going to do is do exactly the same as I did for the bottom of this tray because then everything will fit nicely.
that's the box done however i am gonna put another layer of foam board underneath the bottom layer because what's happening is you see there's a little gap and i'm worried that when i come and pick it up i will just take the top layer and drop the bottom layer so i'm just going to give it extra board on the bottom just by using some double stick tape Now I have this tray and then I have the second layer that goes on the top and then the lid that goes on top there and I can pretty securely lift the whole thing up without dropping any of the layers which I'm very grateful for actually but yeah this feels a lot lot better and a lot more secure it's not the prettiest thing I've ever made for sure it's also not the neatest thing I've ever made but it will do the job which is to hold these beautiful paints securely without me worrying about either breaking a tray or dropping the watercolors so I hope you enjoyed watching me create this tray holder thing for the my roman schmaltz paints and i can't wait to be swatching these all the color names got me really excited thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you in the next video bye